This is Brad A. Milford with the Unlimited Business Wisdom Podcast, where, that's right, business owners share their wisdom. It's short to the point to respect people's time. And because we know transforming possibility happens really fast and it leads to lasting results. So enough of that. Let's get to it. If you've been listening, you know all that already, right? Let's get to it. Let's get to some really special and interesting guests. In a few sentences, Arjun, tell me who you are and what you do. Hey, how's everybody doing? My name is Arjun. I run Everyday Dreamers, a Vancouver-based marketing agency. Uh, basically, what we do is we focus on helping solopreneurs and entrepreneurs have a solid lead generation system in place. Because, you know, like all businesses need five things, right? You need solid lead generation, you need a sales team, a production team, good customer service and accounting, right? Specifically service-based businesses. So many solopreneurs sort of fall short in this lead gen space and at least to this feast or farming, a fat feast or farming sort of thing. Um, we just help people make sure that they're getting a certain amount of leads that they can close every single month. I love that. And I mean that sincerely. It's not just fluff. I love that. And there's multiple things that I love about that because I do recognize what you just said. There are a lot of solopreneurs. And I'd love to dive into that here in just a moment that really do struggle with the lead gen. I'm not mm -hmm. sure they have sales systems or they don't understand the steps or that kind of thing. Maybe they don't have experience, but that is a big hotspot for a lot of entrepreneurs. Yeah. So well, thank you. I think one of the things, sorry, I know you have other questions, but one of right. the things about that, that I think a lot of people get confused about is there's so many things to do in marketing. You know, there's brand building, the billboards, there's advert, there's digital marketing. There's, there are all these social media platforms that get so much for sole openers. Um, and so what we do is we really help people focus in like, look, if you are starting business or you're a business three years in and you haven't really completely figured out your lead gen, you probably need PPC. You probably need LinkedIn. You probably need this thing that's just a repeatable source of business. And then you can expand to other things, you know? So that's one of the things that I think is our main value add. We just help people clarify, this is what you and your position need to generate business rather than saying, do everything like a lot of people do. Love what you're saying. I absolutely love what you're saying. Um, I say it all the time, focus, 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 right? So on what's most important. So great value add. And I love the mission and vision of what you do. I know you do other things too, but you got a very, very succinct, very, um, very great focus there. Question number two, what's the best thing about being in business? Oh man, for me, it's the freedom. Like, it's just so nice. I've had jobs where I've worked nine to five jobs. I actually had a job working um, right out of university. I worked with uh, the United Nations, with UNESCO in Paris. Super cool experience. Never was able to switch off, literally on my phone all the time, because it's a demanding job. And a lot of jobs working with bigger organizations, at least until you get higher up or your team's big enough to support you, need you to clock in more hours than you're actually getting paid for. Um, you end up working a lot, you know, at least that was my experience and it was really meaningful and I loved it. But when I was sort of done there, I recognized that I need to start my own thing to create the life that I envisioned when I was 12, you know, that life that I had where I'm like, okay, I'm traveling around. I have a decent amount of freedom. I can study things that I really want to, like I can learn Muay Thai for a couple of weeks if I want to, I can learn how to play chess in Russia, you know? So that's kind of what I do now. I travel to interesting places where I'm, I feel called to where I'm like, hey, I really want to learn chess in Russia. And the reason I'm talking about that is that's where I have planned to go towards the end of this year. But before Corona, I was actually in Thailand learning Muay Thai. That was really valuable too, because I was sort of, um, I spent six months and I got towards, you know, gearing up to do a professional fight and everything. And then of course, Corona hit and it never happened, but I got ambitions to go back there. So for me, having a business is really about creating that life and creating that freedom for myself that you really can't get working from someone else. Or maybe you can, and I just haven't found how to, but this was the way I did it. <laughs> I love that. And I'm, I'm with you. I never found that working for anybody else. Um, and it even took, being honest, it even took me a while to find it as an entrepreneur too. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people go from, you know, the nine to five to the 24 seven when they first start. Oh yeah. So, the first three years are a struggle. <laughs> Yeah, but the freedom is there if you keep at it. So I, I love that. That's great. Mm -hmm. Question number three, Arjun, and this is a fun one. So I know you'll, you'll bring some great insight, but we hear from other business owners, they're getting so much business 
even now, especially now, actually, mm-hmm. uh, I think when you get geared and you get really focused, you get targeted and all that kind of stuff that people talk about, right? They get so focused, then they do start getting so much business. And sometimes the amount of business causes some chaos. Would you be willing to share your thoughts about that? Yeah, that's so this is super timely because this kind of happened to me in December. Mm -hmm. Um, I get overwhelmed all the time. Like, and it's usually due to because a certain part of the business is not really functioning as it should. Because if all guns are blazing, those five things I mentioned earlier, right? Lead gen, sales, production, uh, customer service, and accounting. If all these are just firing in all cylinders, it's it's working well. And I don't get overwhelmed. I don't get stressed because other people are usually taking care of it. And I can just make sure all these things are firing well. In December, what ended up happening to me is we had so many clients that I needed to start stepping in and helping my team. And I essentially had two choices. I could hire more people. And my team was getting burnt out. I saw this because I was already burnt out. And I was like, okay, if I hire more people, we're going to have to train them. And that's going to be even more stressful. You know what I mean? So it's like, it was just, it was just, it was at a point of exploding. So I actually made a slightly controversial choice. I shut down early generation. I, uh, I decided to just chill for a second. We were getting a certain amount of clients per month and I shut that down. I, I did eventually end up outsourcing some stuff and I ended up making less money in December and January. But I bought myself time with that money. You know, I outsourced some of my own work and I bought myself some, t- some of my time back. And what I did with that time was I looked at our process. I'm like, okay, what's going wrong? Why are we so overwhelmed? I found that like, look, there's an issue with our lead generation. We're getting the wrong kind of clients. These clients are spent, we're spending a lot of energy. We're spending a lot of time on making it work for these clients, but there's easier clients that we can just hit on the nail, the nail on the head every time. And my team isn't going to be tearing its hair out, you know? So simple enough, fixed our lead generation targeting trained our sales team to make sure that we're asking the right type of questions. And I'm just about ready to turn our uh, lead generation back on. And I'm much more confident about scaling it now because I'm much more confident that we can train people in the appropriate manner. I'm much more confident my team's going to have a larger bandwidth because a lot of those clients that were difficult for us, we've either figured out ways to make them work with, with less effort or they've churned. So we have a bit more space now. So yeah, I guess what I'm really saying is if you're overwhelmed, Figure out how to buy some of your time back to see what's going on. Because if you just keep on plugging along, you're not fixing the issue. You're just sort of surviving it. And I don't think that's the way to do this. <laughs> I love what you shared. You speak, you speak my language, Arjun. My hairs are standing on end right now. <laughs> <laughs> like my ears are perked. Uh, th- this is wonderful. And you dropped a lot of value there too, in a, in a very simple and understandable way. So that the people listening, people watching can actually resonate with that. I just went through a very similar process. Um, I actually try to do that once a year if I can, so I can shift and pivot up in the beginning mm-hmm. of the year. So I, I pivot down in December and then ramp back up in January um, systematically. And so I relate very much to what you're saying. And I, I love the, the way you shared it. Um, that's very smart. So we can get all kinds of throughput if we have the right lead gen in place, right? But are you getting the right throughput? So Mm -hmm. if we think about this and it's a faucet, you turn the faucet on, right? But do you have like nails and thumbtacks coming through the faucet or is it flowing like water? Sometimes we get so busy that things get a little jammed up. So I love what you're saying. I'll I'll back to you. Do you have any other thoughts? Yeah, it's just, it's one of my friends. um, I'm actually going to recommend him later in the next question. He has a really good phrase. He says, are you working in the business or on the business right now? You know, and it's as entrepreneurs, you really have to be working on the business as often as possible, you know, and that's what I really try to do. And when you start working in the business, it just, it goes by, man, it goes by so quick. And you just, you miss the important things to set yourself up for next year, I find. Right. So yeah, super smart of you as well to sort of do this thing in January, December. I need to think about that myself. I sort of did it this one time and I'm like, okay, we're good now. But maybe this does need to be an early review. That's um, that's a really smart way, smart thing to do. I love it. I love this conversation. Thank you for sharing, Arjun. The next question, the one that you were already prepped for and you know is coming. 
<laughs> what other successful business people, professionals, owners like yourself, of course, should be on the Unlimited Wisdom Podcast? Oh, yeah. Let me shout out two people. So first, I'd love to shout out uh, my best friend, a very close friend of mine since elementary school, uh, Enoch Wang. He is absolutely insane as a financial advisor, and he's found this really unique niche, and he's just killing it in it. He's, um, he's u- doing Christian financial advising, right? Now, what does that mean? He's been a devout Christian his entire life. He's basically, he has a heavy focus on Christianity, and he's trying to um, teach people to use biblical principles to invest. Me, myself, I'm not Christian at all, but like, hey, his, like his, the things he say, uh, he says are so sound. I'm like, I don't care where you're getting it from. You get it from the Bible, whatever. Like, Hey, you are making me money. You are worth every penny. You get it from wherever you want. It's working not only for his clients like me, it's working for him, you know? Um, so super interesting niche. Want to shout him out. Would be a really interesting person to have on your podcast. I think, uh, the other person I'd love to shout out is actually my business partner, Nicola Carter. She is absolutely crazy in a completely different way from Enoch. Um, She has a whole slew of disabilities that I'm sure she'll tell you about. She's deaf. uh, She's got ADHD. She has like epilepsy. And yet she's managed to parlay each of these disabilities into a paying position. (laughs) So for example, her being deaf, she's managed to use that to get the way she hears now is she has cochlear implants. So she approached Cochlear and she's like, hey, listen, we can do some social media for you. I use your product and I'd love to have our business, Every Dreamers, do your social media. And they said, sure. And then she's also done the same thing with the Epilepsy Foundation. She's also done the same thing um, with uh, some ADHD organizations in BC. So she's just this really interesting person who, when things hit her, she sort of turns them around and sees, how can I make this work for me? I love that powerful stories. I love the descriptions. I just, I, I have worked with some people with disabilities like that through diff- different industries and, and jobs I've had. And um, I, that's, that just really speaks to my heart. I just did a post just recently about how podcasting like this and meeting people from all over the world, it just, there's so many wonderful stories who people have just taken something that could be a hindrance and turn it into something beautiful and just transformed it completely. And I'm just, uh, this, I'd, I'd love hearing you share that. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I, just, I love hearing you share that. I will absolutely reach out to both of them. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate it. And I love the shout outs. Thank you, Arjun. No worries. Let's get to the crux of this. Let's get to the center of this. Get some wisdom. What piece of wisdom from your experience and your perspective would you share with other business owners? Mm-hmm. So what I'd like to share today is I'd like to talk a little bit about LinkedIn. I think a lot of business owners are underutilizing LinkedIn. And by this, I don't mean like create a business profile and use it as a traditional social media. Yeah, you can do this, but this is not the most powerful way to use LinkedIn. I think what you need to do on LinkedIn is you need to use your personal profile and you need to set yourself up so that people in your network can see what you're doing and see the good you're creating in the world. And this is a really powerful source of lead generation for inbound leads. If you've been on LinkedIn over the last, I don't know when this is going to air, but if you've been on LinkedIn over the last basically 2022, you would have noticed that there's a rise of the LinkedIn influencer. This is not something that was there in 2020. Even in 2021, this was a baby idea. You know what I mean? But you have some people who literally started doing LinkedIn posting like four months ago. Four months, that's it. And now they're hitting 30,000 likes on each of their posts. They're getting comments galore. And you know what? If they're getting 30,000 likes in their posts, I can guarantee you 200 odd people are reaching out to use their services. This is a really powerful means of lead generation. And more importantly, it can be combined with a bunch of different strategies. Once you sort of get this attention, you can transform it in a bunch of different ways, right? And LinkedIn's just a really good place to get the attention. And more importantly, they're setting up their platform to push this further. They want content creators on their platform. This is really important because sometimes you come, you come across a social media platform that doesn't want this and you don't want to be fighting against a social media platform. Here, they're pushing it. They're creating tools that actively let you do this. LinkedIn's in a really similar place to where Instagram was four or five years ago. And so if you, if you start now, 
if you start your uh, LinkedIn presence, you start actually actively posting, you start engaging with people, and I'll talk a little bit about how to do that, I think people are going to really benefit off that. We haven't even seen its full potential. And I think people who start now, four or five years from now, we can just be cruising. Kind of like the LinkedIn influencer, sorry, the Instagram influencers you see nowadays. Um, how do you do LinkedIn well? Well, you really got to understand two things. You got to understand community and you got to understand content. So both of these are super interconnected and one leads to the other, right? So you need a community before you even start LinkedIn. A lot of people think that, no, you start posting content, it sort of gathers your community. This is not untrue, but your content better be banger. It better be on point if that's going to happen. You that know? may have been true five or six years ago, but I'm not so sure it's true anymore today. If you build it, I'm not sure they're going to come. It better be absolutely amazing. You know, <laughs> like if you are going to expect me to find your stuff without promoting it, it better be more unique than anything else. You know, anyhow. Um, which a better way to do this is to find some friends, find 20 people, you know, who want to grow on LinkedIn with you, find 20 people who are interested in uh, going on this journey with you and say, hey, look, I'd really appreciate it if when you see my posts, just like and comment on them. There's a very specific reason you do this. Like all social media platforms, LinkedIn caps how many people see your posts until a certain amount of engagements hit. So only 10% of your audience is actually going to see your stuff that you post until you hit like that five, six, seven like threshold. And so you get a couple of comments. Then LinkedIn will bump it up a tier. 50% of your audience will see it. And it keeps on going this way until you finally get shown past your initial audience. And this is where it gets really powerful, right? Because when people who, are, who you don't even know, your second degree, your third degree connections are seeing your stuff on a, on a consistent basis, you're growing. Your growth engine has started. You don't need to, like, there's no stopping you, you know? So, you can do that if you have a good crew of friends who you know are going to have your back. They're going to be your community. They're going to see your stuff. They're going to engage with it. It doesn't have to be positive engagement either. Just ask people what they think of it and let them talk about it. You know, it can be bad engagement. Answer the questions that you that they have in there. You know, um, but yeah, this can be done super easily. It's much easier than Facebook. It's much easier than Instagram. It's set up for you. The algorithm is working. So I highly recommend everybody does it. Um, once you have that community in point, you need to think about a little, a little bit about your content. You need to think what kind of content are you putting out there? And I hate to use the term virtue signaling, but look, a lot of what's going on in LinkedIn right now is virtue signaling. People are aligning themselves with issues that are trendy and they're pushing them out there. Like for example, uh, one trendy issue right now is make sure you pay your workers, man. I'm a business owner. I agree. You pay your workers, you know, no one's going to disagree with that point you know we might disagree on the specifics of it but you know it's just no one's gonna uh, dislike that take so maybe is it virtue signaling is it not whatever i'm not even going to get into it what i know is it's a popular opinion and people are sharing it um it works best if you pick something that's a little bit unique to you as well one influencer who i work uh, who i'm working with she has a take where she she believes in neurodiversity and catering to neurodiverse brains because she herself has ADHD, right? This is really particular to her. It's also a trendy opinion, right? Who's going to say, no, you shouldn't allow for neurodiverse brains. You know, this is sort of how you do content on LinkedIn right now. You take something that's personal to you. You make sure it's an opinion that's relatively well-supported and still professional, and you put it out there and you watch it grow. You get that stable bit of likes, right? And then it just grows and it grows and it grows. And four months from now, you're sitting on a couple thousand likes. Okay, it's not that easy. There's a five, six steps in between, but you know what? You'll get there and you'll figure it out. It's not that hard either. Um, there are a couple other tips I can give people. For example, constantly be connecting with people. It's not just about posting. Always be reaching out, always be connecting with people. You can actually, LinkedIn gives you the tools to do this. If you use Sales Navigator on LinkedIn, you know you can create these intricate lists of people that are exactly your target audience. Let's say I wanted to reach out to only videographers or only podcast um, podcasters. I could put that into LinkedIn sales navigator by creating a lead list. It would give me everybody on LinkedIn who has anything videography or anything uh, podcast related on their profile. I'd go through that list and I'd connect with the ones who are appropriate. And I'd shoot them a quick message. just like, Hey, lovely to connect. I'd let them sit on my profile. I'd let them see the stuff I post. And then a week or two later, I'd just be like, hey, just checking in, just wanting to know if, you know, you, how are you? Just a really genuine connection. Ask them how they are, what they're doing, what they're up to. 
The goal of this connection is not to close business right away. It's not to get them on a meeting and a sales call. The goal of this connection is to get them aligned with you. So next time they see you when scrolling, they drop a comment, they drop a like, right? It's to make a genuine connection. If you connect with people on a consistent basis, LinkedIn will allow you. You can also use automation softwares, but you might get banned for that. So, you know, be a little bit careful, but LinkedIn will allow you to connect to, with between 100 to 200 people per week. Max those out, you know, and in four or five months, you have a couple thousand followers. And guess what? 10% of a couple thousand followers is way more than 10% of 500. So be using that. Keep on growing that. Um, Love it. Yeah. But that's LinkedIn. There's a bunch of other tips I got. Like, you know, you can, how do you, how do you work in CTAs? How do you work in like uh, money posts that actually lead to your actual products? How do you not just do this fluff post? How do you, how do you like have an interesting profile, but an interesting bio, an interesting, you can actually have sound bits, video profile pictures, all this stuff. There's a whole bunch of interesting stuff you can do on LinkedIn, but man, I could talk for hours on this. So <laughs> I don't want to do that. But I'd encourage you and your listeners that, hey, if they ever want to geek out about this stuff, connect with me on LinkedIn, connect with me in person. I would love to chat to people about this. <laughs> I love that. There's lots of things. You just dropped a lot of value, Arjun. And I teach a lot of this stuff. Everything you said, I second. So he knows <laughs> what he's talking about. <laughs> I mean that sincerely. Um, what I love about what you said was the community aspect of it, especially. And also coupled with the algorithm, right? So I think a lot of people get intimidated by the algorithm. I did a post a while back in my group explaining the algorithm, how it works, it, almost how you just described it now so eloquently, right? And it's just certain number of people like it and comment on it, then it goes up a level, then more, then they show it to more people. I mean, it's not really all that complicated. Not unless you're on the tech side of things and you, then you view it, at, you know, from a different perspective. Yeah. And I love what you said about why I call them, you know, engagement pods, but you just said like, grab a few friends, right? You doesn't have to be an official like engagement pod, grab a couple of friends, create a little tribe and help one another out. And you'll see a little yeah. more engagement. It's really simple and valuable to anybody who really wants to focus in on LinkedIn as a lead gen source. It's great. And it's, yeah. everything you shared are super valuable. Also, what I liked about what you shared is that, and I don't know that you used the word, but you displayed it in what you were saying is the consistency of it all. I think a lot yeah. of people start what I've seen, what I've experienced and what I've heard from people is like they start it for a little while, a couple weeks or a couple days, <laughs> some people, and they're like, yeah. Well, it's not going anywhere. Right. <laughs> you got to give it a little bit of the long haul. And you got to be consistent in order to produce results. And I think that's true in business as well as it is with social media. Any thoughts? Exactly. Any thoughts there? 100%. Look, I'm not going to tell you that you need to all of a sudden start posting every day. I'm going to say, look, try it once a week. Make one post a week and commit to doing it for three months. That's 12 posts. That's not even that many, you know, that's not that hard. Do that. And if you don't see any results, Hey, maybe it's not the right space for you. Maybe you didn't find the right message. Maybe it's not whatever, like, but I can almost guarantee you're going to start see some, uh, seeing some results. It's going to start building, especially in the way it is right now in January of 2022, it is impossible to not see results on LinkedIn. If you are posting consistently, um, but yeah, look, if you can't be consistent for three months and stick with a schedule, A, you might struggle a little bit in business. It's, it's tough to, it's tough to um, really do well, I think, at anything if you can't at least stick to it once a week, you know. With you. I also loved what you said. I'm gonna, paraphrasing, of course, but uh, polarizing content, right? So mm -hmm. I think with new entrepreneurs in some cases and even some seasoned entrepreneurs sometimes they don't want to put their personal views out into the public space and in my experience that really only holds them back the more we share our beliefs and what we stand for and the things that we on on popular topics the more engagement that you get and so the way you touched on that was was brilliant and i love that you shared that I think that um, what people are 
what people shy away from on any social media platform is inauthenticity, any inauthentic content, right? You want to stay away from inauthentic content. And um, I am guilty of creating inauthentic content myself. It still happens. It's very easy to do, to sound corporate and robotic and to um, not speak genuinely. And when you actually put out your, your true views, regardless of what they may be, other people will be able to see that quite clearly. And, and you might get some hate, you might get some flack, and that's fine. That's that actually helps you. That helps the algorithm and you can respond to that, you know? And if you can't respond to your own authentic views, then like, you know, you might have a bit of a problem there. So you do, it does help you, you're right. But I will also preface this by saying, hey, if you have a widely held view, like I was talking like, hey, pay your workers well, this is a very widely held view. It probably has a larger audience. So you do want to consider the audience size as well, right? If you have a view that's a little bit less uh, widely held, you can still put it out there. It's not going to maybe harm you unless you have a very, very big brand. But you might want to start with some of your more widely held views. And everybody has widely held views. It's just finding something about that that's a bit that you're a bit passionate about. Unless you want to create a really, really niche kind of account, you know, that caters specifically to people who have a less widely held view, in which case share those, you know. Um, I know this is a sort of like, flip floppy answer, but it's hard to sort of address this topic without saying, hey, it depends, <laughs> you know? No, I am with you 100%. And I'm, I'm actually really glad that you brought it up. So part of what I do with a lot of entrepreneurs, we really dive into their beliefs and really mm -hmm. clarify what do they believe? What do they stand for? What are their non-negotiables so that they can use that to their advantage in business? So I love hearing someone else share in a different way something that can be advantageous to entrepreneurs on a social media platform. So thank you, Arjun. I really appreciate everything. And everything you share is very actionable. So I want to give you a shout out. Not only are you sharing it here, but you actually messaged me on the side, considering the audience to what would be really useful. And that says a lot about you. And so I want to highlight you and showcase you and really give just give you some props, man, because... In all the time I've been doing this, nearly 100 guests, you're the only one that actually reached out to me personally and said, hey, I really want to serve your audience really well. What do you think about this? That just speaks volumes, my friend. So thank you for being who you are. <laughs> hey, thanks, man. I just gave me tingles. I appreciate it. I appreciate it a lot. Um, I appreciate you. Let's all... shift gears for a moment. So I know... I already know, this is the first time I've been but I already know that you and I can talk business and we, we could just do this all day. This would be wonderful. Let's shift gears because I know that we share this in common, right? That we, that we work to live, not, not live to work, right? Yeah. So what's some of the most fun vacation? I know you're a traveler too, which like, I love hearing stories. What are, what's, what's the most fun vacation or where's some real cool spots that you've been that Oof. you like? Oh man, there are a couple. There are a couple. Um, I think the most fun I had, right? The most fun I had was definitely uh, in the Caribbean. In university, I actually, we, we took a boat out and we sailed around uh, the Caribbean for a couple of days mm. or a couple of weeks, actually. And it was, it was awesome, man. It was, um, it was basically the vibe over there is, you know, you wake up, you're, you see these crystal clear waters, blue skies, sandy beaches, and you decide I'm going to sail my boat that direction. <laughs> and you sail that direction. And eventually it starts getting around midday and you have a, a, you're barbecuing in the boat, you have a little cocktail in hand and you're like, okay, you know what? I probably want to make it into a port by nighttime because nighttime's a whole different vibe. Nighttime, there are bars on every single island. They're complete islands with nothing more than a bar. And it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so you you decide like, hey, I'm going to get into this port and you plot out your uh, course there. You figure out how long it takes you. You get in, you head down to the bar and it's a bunch of people who've been sailing all day, just chilling. It's a really good time. Um, I, I used to bartend in university. And so some of the most ingenious cocktails I've had were in the Caribbean. They have this one place. Um, it's quite a famous bar, actually. It's called the Sandy Dollar. It's that one that I was mentioning. It's it's inside an old shipwrecked um a boat actually that just shipped out on an island that is nothing on this island except for this boat and this bar and that's it and they invented their own cocktail called the painkiller and it is 
unique and lovely and a lot of fun. <laughs> it will kill your uh, pain. <laughs> oh, it'll kill a lot of things. It'll definitely kill. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I think that that vacation is some of the most fun I had. Like we could talk about the most enlightening vacation I had, the most I grew, et cetera, et cetera. But when you're talking fun, nothing beats that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I've been to a few places, like not exactly where you're describing, but a few places like that. And that sounds glorious, Arjun. I absolutely oh, nice. love it. You took me back to just telling your story. You took me back to when I was in Aruba. They had a drink called the Aruba Reba that I fell in love with. That was just glorious. <laughs> I'm putting it on the list. A new thing on the bucket list. Let's go. <laughs> I love it. I want, I just, I want to, again, I want to highlight and showcase you and I want to thank you for the investment of your time. I know you, you took a chunk out of your day to be here with the, with the audience and everybody listening and watching. So I appreciate you and celebrate you for that. Before I go to where people can reach out to you, I'm interested because in I know you have a lot of cool initiatives going on. So I want to just do a quick check-in with you. Are there any other initiatives aside from what you've shared today that you just like to share other things that you're into, people can reach out to you for, um, what can they polarize themselves with you on? <laughs> yeah. Any sure. thoughts? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Okay. So I, I believe in doing good. And so th I'll share something that um, I'll share something good that I've been trying to do recently. Um, there's, there are a lot of vulnerable populations online none more so than seniors. I don't know if you checked in with the seniors in your life recently, but I've checked in with my grandmas and both of them are getting up there in age and they've been scammed online like countless times. Well, not countless, but like it's happened. They've bought courses that aren't really that good. They've bought a little Facebook ad toys that really don't do anything or are the wrong size or anything on wish.com. Like these aren't, these aren't big scams, but these are small things that are really not worth the money. Um, if you look online, you will find plenty of vulnerable older people that have been scammed out of big money, thousands of dollars. There are complete organizations that focus on copywriting towards these vulnerable populations um, and essentially scamming them out of their money. So one thing that I've been trying to do with Every Year Dreamers, my marketing agency, is we've been putting together a small guide for seniors to help them not get scammed. How do you get enough computer literacy to essentially see some of the marketing tactics that are going on and protect yourself against them. This is a bit of a challenging project of mine because it involves teaching people who aren't really that digitally literate about some of the things that very, very digitally literate people do. You know, So this is, this is challenging, both in putting together the information and getting it out there, but I'm, I'm almost done it. I'm really excited. It's due to drop first week of February. So I would love if anybody knows seniors in their life who could use this or are worried about seniors in life, please feel free to reach out to me. This is going to be just completely free. I'm just going to give it away. And I think it could really help people. I absolutely love that. How powerful is that? So definitely needed in the market. No question about it. Um, I have some people in my family that I might reach out to about <laughs> getting that for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, that's a real problem and you're doing good in the world. And that's one of the things that I love about you. So again, thanks. Thanks for the investment of your time, Arjun. Where can people reach out to you on the marketing side of things or for the thing that you just mentioned? What's the best way to reach you? Is it going to be on LinkedIn or is it somewhere else website? Uh, um, what is it? Listen, if you reach out to me on LinkedIn, I will respond. It might take me a sec, but I will definitely get to you. Uh, if you reach out to my website, if everydaydreamers.ca, if you shoot us an email over there, you will get a response much quicker, guaranteed. But if you want to reach out to me personally, feel free to do so on LinkedIn. It might take me a sec, but I'll get back to everybody. <laughs> That's because you have some strong lead gen coming in. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Just it's overwhelming as, you've, as we've already talked about. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's a thing. I love it. And, and what's the site again? everydaydreamers.ca dot ca yeah. charlie alpha correct yeah uh our our seo is pretty strong so if you just search up everyday dreamers we should show up <laughs> love it absolutely love it thanks again for all everything all the actionable information that you dropped in and just for being on this is brad a milford with the unlimited business wisdom podcast 
podcast, if I can only say my own podcast, <laughs> where business owners making, here's what's fun, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Look, sure, it's about the money, right? And profit, but it's more about sharing their wisdom and creating global impact. So now I like to say there's unity in community. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much, guys.